This is not just a campaign. This is more of a mission. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot lose this campaign for the good of the country. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's not about me. It goes well beyond me. It goes about the country. And I think everybody knows it, and I think people are beginning to dawn on people. That was President Biden at his campaign headquarters in Delaware yesterday, and that was just before his landslide victory in South Carolina's Democratic primary. In this primary, he secured all of the state's 55 delegates that were up for grabs. Joining us now to discuss a little more is the national co-chair for the 2024 Biden-Harris campaign, Mitch Landrieu. He's a former senior advisor to President Biden and former White House infrastructure coordinator and the former mayor of New Orleans. And so I like to refer to him as the mayor, OK? I'm going to give the mayor some respect. <laughs> My mama raised me right. Mayor, it is um, good to <laughs> see you. you. We hope to have you at the table with us soon. Uh, let's start in South Carolina. Uh, much was made about what uh, to glean from these results in the lead up to last night. Obviously, the president came out victorious. What, how, what is the campaign's message now going into what is, frankly, basically a general election? Well, first of all, it's great to see all of you, Governor Steele. It's nice to see you. Good it's been to a see long you, time. Uh, I would say a couple of things. First of all, Donald Trump is uh, a danger to the future of America. He's an existential threat. Uh, he wakes up every day thinking about himself. He's already told us that a future presidency will be about revenge and retribution. Joe Biden gets up every day thinking about how to help American people and how to really bring home wins for everybody. And you saw that in a massive way, not only in South Carolina, but the day before. The president on the international stage is protecting and defending America's interests in a strong, powerful way. And then he did that again in South Carolina yesterday. He made a promise to the African-American community, who he has acknowledged sent him to the presidency, that he would be in South Carolina, put South Carolina first. And the people of South Carolina showed up in a big way. I mean, what else can you say about 96 percent? So I don't want to gloss over there, over this, as though this is a little thing. This is a major win for the president. And in the, in the clip that you showed, the president said something yesterday. I was actually with him in Delaware. And it was quite poignant where he reminded us that this campaign is really bigger than him. Um, it's not just about him. It's about saving democracy. And I think that the American people are beginning to wake up to this fact and understanding how critically important it is. And I would just recall uh, for everybody, the only person that has ever beat Donald Trump is Joe Biden. He did it once, and he is absolutely going to do it again. Mitch, I want to uh, push on the idea that, you know, this was a big win. It's good. But there are, there are a lot of cracks that sort of lie beneath this win uh, for the president in terms of how, more broadly how the American people are viewing his presidency, viewing his handling of various affairs. How does, how does the campaign take the, the very good wind from, wind from a win like this um, and push forward uh, and, and really kind of make the case that, you know, if the other guy is Donald Trump, <laughs> this is where you need to be, right? I mean, and why aren't Americans getting that? What is happening that seemingly there's, there's this disconnect between the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, and the narrative around uh, Donald Trump with the American people? Well, I think the way we, we would push back on that, um, Michael, is, is this, that the general election is just getting started. Um, we are going to have the longest nine-month, most intense uh, knock down, drag out fight that, that we have seen in this country deserves uh, so that we can protect our democracy going forward. And as people get keyed in, you begin to notice that in the last week, the president's actually leading uh, in three national polls. People are really starting to wake up to the fact that this is a Donald Trump, Joe Biden rematch. And the one thing that we have that Donald Trump does not have, never has and never will have is the receipts. Uh, and so when the president came into office, you know, he came in in the midst of an insurrection. He came in the midst of COVID. He got shots in arms. We passed four of the largest pieces of domestic legislation that have created over 15 million jobs. Just to stop here, Donald Trump created negative 2.5, the worst jobs record since Herbert Hoover. Lowest unemployment rate that we've had under 4% uh, in a long time. Wages are going up. People are going back to work. We have 40,000 infrastructure projects. These are roads and bridges and airports and ports and waterways that are being built that are putting people back to work, getting lead out of the water 
for people all over the country, given everybody high-speed Internet. We're taking that case to the American people, and there is going to be a demonstrated success there. We're going to continue to do that. We're going to work hard because we're going to fight for every vote. Uh, but I have every confidence that when uh, the choice is between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, whether it's between the future or the past, whether it's between lifting up people or pushing them down, Joe Biden uh, is going to continue to be the president of the United States. Mayor Ledger, we heard something this week that we rarely hear out of folks from Washington, which was someone admitting that they were wrong. I want you to take a listen to Larry Kudlow talking about his once predictions for this economy. Mia Culpa, I was wrong about the slowdown in the recession. So was the entire I don't think you were wrong. forecasting fraternity. The well, the Fed, the, everyone was wrong. I mean, everybody. He, he, he was wrong, and that seems particularly relevant because you have this new Moody uh, analytics report coming out saying, uh, questioning sort of who the next president will be on the margin. Political factors favor Trump's candidacy, while economic factors favor Biden's. I wonder if that is how you are looking at it inside the campaign. Well, Alicia, let me let me just say this. First of all, Larry, thank you for for saying that. I wish more people would would step up to the plate, and it really is a response to Michael's previous questions. One of the reasons why people have doubts is because for the last year, every major economist basically, you know, put their foot on Joe Biden's head and said, what he's doing is wrong. We're going to have a recession. We're not going to have economic growth. There's no way that you can have a soft landing. And of course, the president has proved everybody wrong. We have the strongest economy in the world. Now, we know that prices are still high. That's why the president's fighting with the pharmaceutical industries to lower prescription costs. That's why he's made sure he put a cap on the amount of money that people have to pay for their prescriptions or gotten the cost of insulin down. That's why he's fighting those fights every day. But it is absolutely true that there has been a a huge amount of hand-wringing and bedwetting that has turned out to be completely wrong, not just a little bit wrong. And I think Joe Biden is going to be proven right. Uh, and I think that, as, as I have said, this is going to lead to his reelection because this is literally about saving on democracy and then lifting up everybody from the bottom up in the middle out so that everybody is involved in this great American dream because diversity is our strength, our indivisibility is our strength. Joe Biden understands that. He is in the moment. And uh, I think he's going to do much better than everybody has expected him to do. You know, Mayor, um, obviously, big, not a shocker that I was with the campaign the last time uh, Joe Biden was on the ballot for presidential. And one of the things that I am aware that I know that we did last time that I have not seen um, being employed this time is bringing together some of these coalitions. The Biden coalition is very specific. It is based Democratic voters, it's independent voters, and it's moderate Republicans. But much has been made about about how a lot of some of these fractions of base Democratic voters feel. So, and, and under that base are the progressive, and I mean traditional progressive organizations, but also some of these newer, younger groups, like your Indivisibles, um, and so on and so forth. How is the campaign engaging those folks? Because, uh, you know, the, the, we talk about it all the time here at the table. The streets are chatty, and it is, it, the whole coalition is going to be needed well, if Joe Biden is going to be successful. Listen, 100 percent. The other day I was in South Carolina. I was in Mr. Singleton's barbershop, the oldest African-American barbershop in South Carolina, getting tightened up a little bit. And his son was cutting my hair, and he was talking a little bit about, well, you know, I'm not really convinced. You know, can you talk to me a little bit more about it? When I got into him for a minute and explained it to him, he was like, oh, I didn't understand that as much as I should have. And so we have to do some, when you know this, a, a campaign is like a duck on the water. Everything looks calm up top, but down on the bottom, you like paddling like hell. And all these coalitions have to put together. They need to be paid attention to. They need to be given proper respect. Um, there are always going to be really difficult issues that we have to deal with. And this campaign clearly understands that. As you get closer into uh, election day, remember, we're nine months out. We, we are fully aware of the fact that we have to bring our coalitions together, which, by the way, from campaign to campaign change. You might have also noticed the other day a poll that I thought was really important is that the gender gap between the Biden camp and the Trump camp is widening in a massive way. Uh, this is easy to understand because P President Trump has been hostile to women his entire life. And, of course, on the issue of choice, uh, where the Supreme Court has reversed Roe and given states like Texas and Ohio particularly the ability uh, to authorize sheriff's deputies to go into people's houses and to actually search their toilets for miscarriages, that is like an unbelievable set of circumstances that nobody thought would exist in the United States of America. So you get a little bit here, you get a, bit, a little bit there. At the end of the day, it's 50 plus one, uh, and, you know, you get back to work.
Mm. All right. Y'all, is, is the mayor going to have to come to the table soon? I think the mayor's going to okay. come to the table. All right, all right. I'm you coming. heard it here first. If y'all come to the table, come to the table. we got on. more questions. If y'all got biscuits, look, look, I'm from the oh, south, and you got biscuits, got, and you, oh, and, got, and you got a little grits. I'm coming. We got biscuits, Miss Landrew. Okay. Thank you very much. Then I'll be there. <laughs>